Mark Rogers, TV and SEC Breakdown, looking at positional units across the conference. And we bring in uh, my colleague and friend, David Waters, from right here on SEC Breakdown. Please join us on Twitter and Facebook, getting you set up for the season starting on September 3rd. All right, Gators offensive line. A could-be disaster going into 2015. The coaching staff, David, did a pretty remarkable job patchworking that thing together to make it uh, at least viable for most of the season. Right, and most of that kind of predicated on quarterback play. Under Will Greer, first six, first six games of the season looked a lot better. Uh, Will Greer gave them the time they needed. He got rid of the ball, didn't hold on the ball for too long, threw on some timing routes. Treon Harris could not get the timing route down, held the ball on too long, got sacked a good bit. That led to Florida leading the nation and sacks given up with 46 sacks on the year. That has to improve if Jim McElwain and this Florida offense needs to take the next to take the next steps they need to take to becoming a consistent, uh, you know, top tier SEC team. David Sharp uh, showed up for SEC Media Days. That speaks to his performance on the field, also his leadership capabilities. He holds down the left tackle position, most likely. Martez Ivy is a guy that uh, needs to stay on the field. Gator fans would love to see him uh, fulfill his potential. Right. And those two guys could be your tackles. Uh, David Sharp, the left tackle, uh, will anchor the offensive line. He's going to, he's he got a lot of experience. He's, he's um, plenty, plenty of experience. But even at times this spring, he struggled against this Florida defensive line. This Florida defensive line is good. It's great practice for this offensive line to go against. But, you know, a lot of these defensive lines in the SEC are comparable to Florida. There's going to be many teams Florida plays where, the defensive line is just as good as what they play in practice. So if they are having trouble handling this defensive line, they're probably going to have some trouble handling a lot of the other uh, defensive lines in the SEC. Uh, Frederick Johnson looked like he might be ready to take over the next right tackle spot, but he struggled really a lot in the spring after looking having a promising freshman year last year. So Martez Ivy comes back from injury, and maybe now the coaching staff throws him at the right tackle spot. If Frederick Johnson can turn it around uh, in fall camp and, and get some good play out of that right tackle spot, then they'll move Ivy more than likely to right guard. They're going to get Ivy – on the line somehow, some way. He's too talented to to to, to keep down. Uh, I still think um, you know he's not going to take over Sharp's position because of Sharp's experience. He could take over Frederick Johnson pretty quick, but if he doesn't, they're going to get him on the line. He's his you know from his high school days, he's played in a run heavy offense. So I think he's still learning the tackle position himself. But if from this injury. If you know if he learned some you know the playbook and learned some techniques as much as he could, I think the injury kind of held him back a good bit. If he wouldn't have been injured, he probably would already be anchoring that right tackle spot. So can he bounce back from that injury uh, early enough if Frederick Johnson doesn't get the job done? Now, of course, it's a position that you, you really can't mask. Uh, maybe you can go to a short passing game. That would be the one thing. Quick drops. Uh, to, to take some pressure off the offensive line. But basically, especially in this conference, you need an offensive line. You can't mask it. Uh, there's no way to do that. We talked about the running backs a few segments ago. Uh, low yards per carry, despite uh, Kelvin Taylor's ability to probably play in the NFL. Um, you, you need the ground game. You need the push up front. And, and that would be the first thing that, that I would think it needs to really uh, be, a, be a, a result of an improved offensive line is a power running game. Right, Mark, and it was you know the interior of this line. They they took a step in, in in the spring, and then we saw in the spring game where his running backs were getting yards. Cronkite was getting yards. Thompson had a good long run where he had to make one one man miss, but he had some good blocking to start up front. It's these guys: Cameron Diller, Tyler Jordan, Antonio Ryle, T.J. McCoy, Nick Buchanan. These are names Florida build depth with in the interior, but they definitely need you know a couple guys to step up and, and take their starting roles. Um, they they, they're going to need to be relied on so the running backs don't have to do as much as Kelvin Taylor did last year. He created a lot of his yards. And if Jim McElwain wants this, you know, the play action pass to go because to, to, you know, to build this offense, that, that, that's predicated on this offensive line be, being strong, being something that this offense can rely on. Uh, it's, you know, with uh, so some guys at center, Cameron Dillard, he he has a tight battle. He's more than likely to start it, but TJ McCoy looked pretty good when Dillard was out with a couple of injuries in the spring. I think it was a broken nose, if I'm not mistaken. So he uh 
it's you know TJ McCoy stepped in and 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 filled up and, and filled the role pretty good. So look for the tight battle in in uh, in fall camp between Dillard and McCoy um, at center. And like I said, you know with um, and with um, Ivy and uh, Frederick Johnson at, at right tackle. Those those two battles on the offensive line are going to be are, are going to be very, very interesting and very important for Florida to figure out and for this offensive line to to become a force in the SEC. Now, typically we think of uh, a positional unit being down, being weak, if freshmen are able to step right on campus and compete and buy for significant playing time. I, I don't think that's as much the case in today's football as it was at one point. A lot of these guys come in ready to play. We've seen it at Ole Miss in particular with Laramie Tunnel is probably a different deal. Uh, he's like an all-decade player, uh, but uh, certainly with Greg Little coming in at Ole Miss uh, this year, looking to start at left tackle. So any guys that just stepped on campus in February, signed in February, and probably got some early playing time in the spring that uh, may factor in this? Uh, two guys in the summer. They'll end up getting Jawan Taylor. He can play probably tackle or guard. Uh, probably needs to lose some weight uh, before he can do anything. Uh, but, you know, like you said, that's one probably offensive line is the one is definitely the one position in college football where the, the, the transition from high school to college, a lot of physical work needs to be done where they need to get bigger is not too much. You hear a guy needs to lose weight. So uh, that's the interesting with Jawan Taylor. Uh, but I guess that's because, you know, they want to see where they can play him tackle or guard. Uh, Brett Hagee, uh, another promising interior guy, uh, Florida, you know, so the interior is a lot better than the exterior right now, especially depth wise. Uh, so it's, it will be, a question to where Florida uses him, maybe at center. Uh, but like I said, you got two guys with a Dillard and McCoy who's got to have that locked up. So if they want to get Heggy on the field early, he probably has to go to guard. All right, this Florida football team somehow won the Eastern Division with poor quarterback play the second half of the season, subpar offensive line play for most of the season, and faced three top 10 opponents and basically got shut down to close out the season. That's not going to happen again need the offensive line to step up and be much better this fall. David Waters, SEC Breakdown. Uh, join us on Twitter and Facebook, uh, breaking down the Gator offensive line. Thanks, Dave.